Hey, my name is Sander de Vries, um, and in this tutorial I will be showing you how to do uh, single lane scripting or also called coding in Lemur. So this can be useful when you want to use the object um, monitor uh, to show what's going on inside a fader or to see what level a fader is at or you can also use scripting uh, when you want a fader to control several parameters of another fader. So for example, we'll get a fader up on our lemur screen. Let's make it slightly bigger. And then we'll put this monitor object just above it. Now what we can do with this monitor is actually have it show the position of the fader. So, um, for example, when um, as a hold E, I can actually play around with the interface on the computer which is just a quick shortcut to see if everything's working so right now the fader is at about halfway so I want this monitor object to reflect that so what I'm going to do is click on the monitor and then in the object properties I'll change this to um, volume for example and then here next to value this is where we can actually write the uh, script or the expression. So the script that we're going to use for this is going to be the name of the fader, which you can see over here. It has to be the exact name, so if it's fader 2, it has to have the number 2. Or things such as multi-slider, which as you can see over here has a capital S, it, it needs the capital S in there as well. So this, uh, this object over here is just called fader, and then we do dot x. So now, as, in, as you can see, I'm sliding this up and down, and it shows you in three decimal points how high the fader is from zero to one. A few things you can change. You can actually multiply this by a number, so you could actually see the numbers on a different scale. So of course, when you're looking at, at uh, digits from zero to 100, you no longer need this precision of three decimals so you can get rid of this and now that makes a lot more sense or um, you could do 127 for any MIDI controllers yeah so that's step one of using scripting in an interface when using objects such as a multi slider which has several different sliders and you only want the monitor object to show what is happening in the second or in the third slider then there's a different script you can use that. So let's change this to four sliders and we'll create a monitor object and we'll call this slider2 and for the value we will check that we have the name correctly so it's going to be multi slider dot x and then use the open square brackets number one because this slider over here is slider zero one two three it starts at zero so if you want this slider this one over on here then it would be slider two but we'll use this slider and that is done so now as I'm pulling this one up oh, as I'm pulling this one up you can now see Again, just the details for that slider. So we need copy paste. You may notice that it automatically changes the name of the slider or changes the number of the slider because there cannot be sl two slider two objects. The name of the object has to be unique. So in that interface, I'll change that for zero, change this one for number two, and this one for number three. So now you can see that each of these different monitor objects show the individual sliders. Another thing you can do in um, with single line scripting is have a fader control other parameters such as the friction or the speed of a different fader. For example, let's get rid of these for now. Let's get another fader in here. Make it slightly bigger so we can see what's going on. Then 
for the behavior of this fader, we'll turn the physics to mass spring, which means that basically it listens to the friction friction effect, which is uh, on a scale from zero to one. Um, if this tr friction is one, then there is no way, no leeway in the movement. See that as soon as it reaches the mouse, it stops. But if I change the friction to say 0 0.2, notice how it keeps going for a lot longer. So if I want to be able to control this number, I can, instead of just writing a single number, number 2, I can simply write fader.x. What this does is it listens to whatever this number is, the same as what we set the monitor to be, and it uses that number for the amount of friction in the in the fader. However, to avoid confusion, we will re revert this number back to its original. So now we can actually see that it's zero to one. Oh, we forgot to change the precision back to let's say two digits and we'll also change this to friction now we can see the friction is now one so it doesn't have any leeway in this movement as we're pulling this down it will now keep moving forever as I'm pushing it up slowly you'll notice that there's more friction so this, all, this can also be done with things such as speed so we'll change this to speed just to have a different slider. This is called fader 3. So again we'll go to our main fader, click on behavior, do speed, fader 3.x. So as we're putting this here, oh, I forgot to change this one as well. Fader 3. doesn't move because the speed is zero. That's very fast. So for example we can speed have the speed down here have no friction to have a continuous moving fader. So thanks for watching.